Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Victoria, this is Radiant Moon Tarot. Today we're bringing forward messages for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. This is messages from your spirit guides, whatever it is they want you to know right now. This is a timeless reading, so whenever this happens to find you is exactly when it's meant to, whether it's the day I post it or years from now. But let's have a look and see what messages your spirit guides want you to know at this particular moment. You're about to be shown the path, shown the way, something is about to be revealed to you. Some of you have been feeling maybe like you've made a lot of changes in your life or there's been a lot going on that's seemingly uh, out of your control. Maybe some of you have had some losses, you've had a lot of things uh, shifting in your world and maybe you're feeling um, like you're starting over or maybe you're feeling like you're kind of just out of energy. We do have the empty well coming in here and this is showing you that you are about to find a sense of direction, new beginnings, and your energy is about to be renewed and replenished. We do sometimes need to cleanse and purge from our lives in order to move ourselves forward. So if you've been feeling empty and lost, maybe you've been feeling like there's nothing wonderful that's been happening in your world, okay? Or maybe just, again, those things spiraling out of control. This is card number 16 relates back to the Tower card, right? Which is shattering old belief systems, which is letting things go, or maybe feeling like things have been taken away from you. But trust on this path that you always have your journey your, of your foundations that you've built. You have the wisdom, the knowledge, the experiences that you've been through, and these help you move forward. And what is bringing, what you're attracting new into your life is bigger, better, brighter, and shinier than it was previously. But we do sometimes have to go through this challenging transformative process. We do have the unmarked trail bringing revelation. Now, depending on how things are going in your life, one of these cards could potentially come before the other, okay? When we have the unmarked trail, this can represent that if you've been feeling lost or not sure where to go, um, you will be getting some sort of clarity. The path forward, the trail ahead will be revealed to you, right? And quite often um, require you to take a little bit of action, a little bit of initiative, right? Or dip your toe into the water of uncertainty and uncomfortable energy, okay? Because this leads you forward, this brings you growth, and this brings you towards new opportunities. So this may be um, a big burst of clarity. This could be uh, a whole new sense of direction or Maybe your belief systems have been changing, right? And now you're kind of getting a deeper understanding of things, right? And this is like, ah, I see now, right? So things are opening up for you. Those doors are opening up for you so that you can move forward. Now, the unmarked trail with a revelation could also spark a letting go, because this does relate back to the tower card, right? And quite often with the tower card, what happens is things feel like they're shattered in our lives because we've had some sort of revelation or some sort of epiphany or something has been revealed to us in some way. And it causes certain things to crumble and shatter, but they're things that we're done with, things that aren't what we want anymore or things that are just not part of our evolution. Sometimes we get this revelation, this information maybe we stumble across to spur us into action. And it may feel a little, little bit like the end of the world or that the world is crumbling around you, but it's clearing the path for a better way. So you may have some challenging energy that you've been going through or that you may go through in the near future. So your spirit guides want you to know that they're always here protecting you and guiding you, thank you, um, every single step of the way. 
and that trust in your journey, trust in yourself, have confidence in yourself because you are exactly where you're meant to be. Things are lining up for you, but sometimes um, sometimes we have to go through some challenging things in order to get the clarity that we need. We have Archangel Safkiel coming in, bringing you some romance. Interesting. Some of you have had some rocky relationships. Maybe you've got a relationship right now and you're like, I don't know where we're going or I'm not sure what I want. Um, perhaps some of you have some relationships right now. It can be romantic, but it doesn't have to be. Where maybe you've kind of grown apart. And so now it's like, okay, can we resolve our issues and come back together? Or... Is this like a permanent parting of ways? I've got my trail marked forward. You've got your trail marked forward. But Archangel Zavkiel is ultimately bringing you some love and romance in your life. And Zavkiel is known as the sacred lover, right? Bringing love, bringing this high vibe energy. Love of self, love of others, right? And... Maybe, yeah, a little bit of romance. Now, no matter where we are in our lives, when we get this particular message, there's a yearning. There's a longing for something that either we haven't experienced yet or that we had and we've lost the connection with. So Zavkil is here to help you move forward. For one, for some of you, if you don't currently have a romantic partner, or maybe you have parted ways, Zavkil is saying, please do not give up on love. Go through your process, go through your healing, but we need to look forward. Perhaps part of your past loves have been meant to teach you something. Sometimes we close out karmic cycles. Sometimes we need to learn something about ourselves. And not all relationships, no matter what they are, friendships or romantic partnerships, even family relationships, not all relationships are meant to last forever. If you have a current spouse or significant other right now, some of you is beautiful. Things are blossoming, things are heating up, right? And you're figuring out where do we go from here? So this is an expansion energy for you. For some of you, you have a current romantic partner of some kind and, you know, you may be separated or you may have been going through some challenges. Now is the time to clear the air, to get things out in the open and then figure out where you want to go from here. Everyone deserves love and romance in your life. Sometimes it can be hard to find. Sometimes we get obsessive about it. Sometimes we decide at this moment in time that we don't care. But Savkiel wants you to be loved. The angels are returning you to a higher vibration of love. So be prepared to embark on a new way of living, of being. Some of you might be repairing your relationship. Perhaps you're trying to infuse more passion and romance into your life in some way. Okay? But even if you don't have a significant other right now, show yourself a little bit of love and romance. How do you attract love into your life? You embrace love. You embody love. You be love. The energy, the vibe that you put out is what you attract back to you whether you are partnered up or not. Zavkil also wants you to know that you are very loved. No matter where you are in your life, do the things that you love. Some of you are coming into alignment to meet a very spiritual connection. This may be a twin flame. Two candles, two flames. It might be a twin flame. Maybe a soulmate, 
that some of you are very much in alignment to meet somebody new who you will love and care about and who will love and care about you. And yes, it might be romantic, but it might not be. It might just be some new friends. We've got the 10 of Gabriel, ouch. The 10 of Raphael, ooh la la. The 9 of Ariel. And the six of Ariel, interesting, something coming back to you. So in this energy here, yes, there's difficulties and there's challenges. You're feeling stressed and burdened, okay? Um, or you have a lot of responsibility, a lot of weight on your shoulders. The 10 of Gabriel reminds you that sometimes we need to ask our spirit guides, our angels for help to take some of the stress, the burden, the excess energy away to lighten our load. The Ten of Gabriel comes up sometimes when we do too much for others. We sometimes don't know when to say no. It's okay to say no. It's okay to put up boundaries and it's okay to do things for you and not necessarily overexert yourself for other people because the Ten of Gabriel is a card of an energy of overexerting yourself, taking on too much. This may be a romantic relationship, right? Is it equal? Is it balanced? Are both people equally committed? Do you share the responsibilities in that relationship, in your household? Or is there one person who is taking on the majority of the responsibilities? one person who is more committed maybe seemingly than the other person and in this in this thing can you restore the status quo can you bring things back into balance maybe yes maybe no for some of you for some of you you are done you're walking away you're trying to you're moving forward and it's been difficult journey right but there's better times ahead for you but the Ten of Gabriel can also really recognize and represent you needing to put up some healthy boundaries somewhere in your life. Let something go, right? Because it's not working for you necessarily. This also can represent that the end you are at the end of a challenging cycle and you are about to experience some better times ahead in any and all areas of your life and especially in your own energy. Happier times ahead with the Ten of Raphael. This can be a relationship restored. This can be you just feeling more positive and optimistic about the future. This can be a goal you have in mind. The Ten of Raphael is the Ten of Cups energy. This is all about recognizing or attracting a lot of love, abundance and blessings. You feel fulfilled, you feel content, you feel happy, you feel joyous, and you feel a little bit of magic flowing through you and to you. This is where we have, it's the happy ever after card, right? Happy home, happy family, happy relationships, happy you. Like a happily ever after, right? Beautiful energy, wonderfully positive energy. Now here's the thing, the 10 of Gabriel. Okay, maybe there is something that you need to kind of give back someone else their own responsibilities. When we restore balance and harmony in a relationship, right? And when we all get on the same page, we resolve our issues, okay? Um, then we turn the chapter, we turn the page, and voila, you're happy ever after chapter. Some of you have had a lot of stress and burdens and difficulties meeting people, getting outside, maybe even processing some past hurts and things the way forward is about to be a lot more positive. So we are closing a chapter of challenge of difficulty and we are opening a new one filled with love and light and balance and harmony and friends, romantic people, children, whatever it happens to be, whatever happen, whatever makes you happy. And if you actually look at these cards, the way they come out, very interesting, love synchronicities, right? They exist everywhere. 
We have this fiery orange energy, your empty well. We've got this fiery orange energy, and then we've got this green, beautiful heart energy, and then we've got this green, beautiful heart energy. Sometimes we need to burn things away in order to heal, in order to grow, and in order to figure out what will make us happy and get us in alignment with that. The nine of Ariel comes in to show element of success, of believing in yourself, of being confident, seeing yourself through to the finish line. And this is a fulfillment of your wishes and your dreams. So there's something that you want. There's something that's going to make you very happy or just give you a sense of accomplishment. And it's right here knocking at your door. And we have, I love rainbows. Beautiful rainbow right there and a beautiful rainbow right there. Rainbows bring a lot of magic, right? A sense of wonder. Rainbows represent our chakras, all being in alignment. And you never know, you just may find your pot of gold because there's magic at the end of that rainbow. It's been a journey, right? but there is a pot of gold waiting there for you. All of your hard work, your dedication, your sense of commitment, right? It all leads you to somewhere beautiful. So never give up on your goals and dreams. Keep on doing your work. Keep on moving forward because things are about to really open up for you in the best of ways. And maybe even balance restored. We've got the six of Ariel here as well. Now this is the six of pentacles. So it's a very circulatory energy. What we put out flows back to us multiplied. So all of this that you've given to others, all of the help, all of the responsibilities, okay? The weight that you've taken off of other people, the help that you've given you're about to get rewarded. Something's coming back to you multiplied in the best of ways. The six of Ariel and the nine of Ariel, right? If there's money issues, okay, there may be something here where you either find a better way to make money or you may get a surprise and someone may actually return the favor that you've given them and may help you. You may have some surprises coming in here for you. Mystical, magical, just things all of a sudden lining up for you. Some wonderful um, people or opportunities that just right place, right time. The magic of the rainbows. Someone may help you. And because you help them, very simply. But the Six of Ariel is where we store, restore balance and harmony in our world. It is one where if things have been out of alignment in a relationship, we get things back on track. And because it is something that may be coming back to you, okay, you do feel an energy here that perhaps there is a separation of people, um, a romantic partnership or even a friendship. And I feel here that if it's something that you want and something that your person wants, you may have some issues to work through, but you may have that person coming back into the fold better than it was before, right? Because why? Because we've resolved some issues. But whatever your situation is, there is beautiful energy all coming in and all lining up for you. So be open and be ready to receive something very interesting because when we're open, we're receptive, we're in the flow and we keep our options open perhaps, okay? Uh, this is where something really wonderful may occur. But you got to be ready. you got to be in the energy for it, right? So a little bit of surprise may come in for you. The Five of Swords, ouch, on top of the Ten of Gabriel. Ten of Pentacles on top of the Ten of Raphael. Very nice. Two of Swords. And the Ace of Cups. 
returning of love, love coming into your life, new people, new partners, new friends, new business relationships as well, things that are very fulfilling and that can bring you money or bring you happiness or bring you joy, whatever that happens to be for you. Perfect partnership. Beautiful. But yeah, five of swords, ouch, okay? Um, that is an energy of conflict of where we've had misunderstandings, miscommunication, things aren't going so well. This is either internal within your head, right? Or this is external with somebody, right? We've got something that we need to resolve, okay? You may feel defeated. You may feel a little bit lost, right? Some of you may have been maybe processing some loss, right? But this is the energy that's going out. And thank goodness, okay? Because we are replacing that with better energies. Now, the funny thing is here, okay? Maybe you haven't had a conflict with a person per se, okay? But this can be something conflict within you or stress and burdens within you, your own energy. We've got this little voice in your head. You see the shadow figure right there? That's the voice in your head, this crow pecking at your brain, okay? Sometimes we need to take a little bit of a look in the mirror. What, what stories, what voices are in your head, right? What is real, what is not real, okay? Because sometimes, you know, we do get this little voice in our head that says, no, you can't do this. No, you're not going to succeed. No, you're going to fail. Nobody wants you. You know, all of that, all of that stuff. And none of it is true. But sometimes it's part of what, you know, the remnants, the shadows of what someone else has told us in the past or what we've learned in the past or what we've interpreted in the past. And those things kind of stick with you a little bit. But we're fleshing it down this empty well. You're like, uh-uh, goodbye. Okay, we're saying goodbye to that. And we're embracing some much more positive vibes. Okay? So if, you're, if you've got that little voice in your head, that little voice of negativity, okay, flush it away. Right? Say, no, we're not playing that game. Right? We're, we got something better. And your spirit guides don't want you to listen to that voice either. Maybe you need to listen to it enough just to process and understand where it came from and why it's sticking with you. Words hurt, right? Words hurt. They stick with you. So sometimes, you know, if you're trying to figure out why don't, why am I not successful? How come my relationships don't work? This could be something from your childhood. It can be something from a past life. It can be a past experience, right? Where you've had arguments with somebody and then they get that last little dig, right? You could be having a healthy conversation until bam, someone twists the knife. And those things hurt. People will sometimes forget what someone said, but ultimately we carry the feelings still with us, right? Because, you know, when we have words that hurt so much, they stick with us, they open a wound. Sometimes they can, you know, scar over, but then get open again, right? We won't always remember the exact words or phrase, but we remember the feelings. And that's why it's so hard to let go of certain things, right? So I do feel that your spirit guides, your angels, your spiritual soul tribe is infusing you with love, with happiness, with joy, with peace, with forgiveness, with balance, with harmony to help you release and let go, flush it down the drain into oblivion, anything that's not working for you. It's a painful process sometimes, but it really does open some wonderful, magnificent doors. Because ultimately, we've got the Ten of Pentacles here as well. And the Ten of Pentacles is wonderful. Not only do we have happy home, happy family, happy relationships, happy friendships, happy everything, we've got abundance here too, right? So we've got stability and security and family and help and advice and support and all of this wonderful stuff. Now, it may be that Spirit is saying to you, hey, don't get so caught in the weeds that you forget the blessings that are all around you already. And it's easy to forget, especially when we're stressed out, 
I mean, especially when we're going through maybe some personal growth, it's very, it can be very challenging to recognize all the good that we have in our lives, the th good things that have happened in our lives and all of the blessings that are yet to come. But in these tens here, we are shoving this out the door and we're bringing in all of this wonderful, wonderful high vibe energy. And perhaps there is something that may be handed down to you from somebody. Ten of Pentacles quite often does represent our family, our family tree, our ancestry. And so maybe there's something here that you are clearing out that is from like a past life. Okay, you may even have a connection with a past loved one. You may or may not have known this person in the 3D world in your lifetime, but you certainly know them energetically, spiritually. And this person may be guiding you, protecting you. Maybe sometimes you get um, a smell, a scent. Maybe sometimes you stumble across some sort of sign and you're like, that's grandma, right? Um, but this can also be help and support in your 3D world as well. This is the Ten of Pentacles is known of, uh, it's a card of inheritance. Now we inherit a lot of things. We inherit family traits, we inherit values, we inherit and we keep, right, belief systems that are forged in our youth usually. And sometimes we gotta let those things go, right? We gotta process those things and find our better way. But you may be getting some help, some uh, some gifts from somebody in your world. Very important. It's part of your family, whether it's your blood relatives or whether it's your chosen family. Okay, surrounded by loving and support system here. Some of you are stepping into your own um, natural born talents as well, because we inherit talents and character traits and things like that too. So. Perhaps some of you here, you're really recognizing who you are and stepping into your own energy of self-worth, self-love, self-care, and maybe you are recognizing some of those talents that you really have and now maybe you're, you're figuring out ways to use them a little bit better. But the Two of Swords, you may have some decisions to make, okay, or you may have some compromises to make here in this energy because the Two of Swords can be one of needing to make a very important decision. But in order to make the decision that you need to make, you're not asking necessarily anyone outside of you. Okay, you might be going within to make a decision. The Two of Swords can also represent, do I let someone in or do I keep someone out? Do we go forward or do we stop? What direction do we want to go? I don't know. I got to think about it. The Two of Swords can sometimes represent that maybe there's just something that you need to figure out on your own. You may not necessarily want anyone's advice, but you may actually have some good advice that's coming in. So try not in this energy of the Two of Swords, try not to close yourself off to too much because there may be some pearls of wisdom that are handed to you from somebody in your life. But the Two of Swords, you're making an important decision, not always easy, okay? Um, but you may just need to trust your intuition, okay? Especially, you know, if you've been through some challenges and some difficulties in your life, especially with relationships or anything like that. And, you know, you need to decide, right? Do I want to meet new people? Do I have a dream? Do I have a goal? Right? Am I willing to let someone in or, you know, um, you know, or I don't know what I want, right? So this is where you're going within and figuring those things out. But the two of swords can represent the need to make a compromise with someone as well, right? You need to have an important conversation and make a compromise. Not everything is black and white. Sometimes we do need to find that middle ground with everything in our lives right? That middle ground brings balance. So find the balance. But there is an Ace of Cups coming in. Peace, healing, forgiveness. The Ace of Cups opens your heart in magical ways. This brings a fresh energy in here, possibly new beginnings, new people, new partnerships, new love, love of self, love of others, anything. The Ace of Cups is also showing if you need to make a decision your intuition has already shown you the way. 
okay? Or you need to be open to your intuition showing you the way. But this brings beautiful energy to you, restores peace after a time of turmoil, and perhaps shows you a new direction, a new way forward, and it's lovely. Brings happiness and joy to you, opening your heart to love, loving yourself, and perhaps, especially with that Six of Ariel, brings you a gift. Because the Six of Ariel can bring you a gift of some kind. Whether it's people, whether it's advice, whether it's money, whether it's opportunity, whatever it happens to be, you might get a gift coming your way. It can be a gift from spirit too. So let's grab your last energies. You might have a little bit of luck as well. The aces do represent new fresh energy. Uh, they also represent improvements, but they may also bring you a little bit of luck. And in the ace of cups, get ready to receive. Always do your best. Take your life and enjoy it. You are alive, so take your life and enjoy it. You were born with the right to be happy, to love, and to share your love. Just to be, to take a risk and enjoy your life is all that matters. Just be happy. Or find your bliss. What makes you happy? Our lives aren't always perfect, right? But there's always something that makes us happy or fills us with love and light. Don't make assumptions. Assume nothing. In any kind of relationship, we can make the assumption that others know what we think and we don't have to say what we want. We assume that they are going to do what we want because they know us so well. If they don't do what we want, we feel hurt and think, how could you do that? You should know. How many times have you been in a partnership or relationship, a family unit, and you're like, I shouldn't have to tell you. You should already know. You know, not everyone's insightful. Not everyone's observant, even if we feel that they should be. Speak your truth. Ask questions. Tell people what you want. Lay out your expectations. Be clear and be honest and be truthful. Truth will always set you free. Ooh, ask questions as well. Why are you jumping away? There we go. Don't take anything personally. Transform your life. Look at dude in the card, right? Happy as a clam. When you refuse to take things personally, you avoid many upsets in your life. Your feelings of anger, jealousy, and even your sadness will simply disappear if you don't take things personally. You know, people aren't, people in situations, they're not always out to get us, right? If you have had relationships and things that haven't gone the way that you had really wanted, I've known people that have, and I've got comments on my channel as well. I gave my life to this person. I spent 10 years with this person. I spent 15 years with this person. I spent 20 years with this person. I'm in misery and they're out living their best life and following their bliss. The thing is people will ultimately do what makes them happy and might not have anything to do with you. We talk about like midlife crisis and things like that. You know, oh yeah, this person, they turned 40, they turned 50 years old and all of a sudden they just walked away from everything. They left everything behind because something has shifted in them. They have evolved, they have grown and maybe there's nothing wrong with the people around them. Maybe they like their life well and good, but there's still something missing in their heart, their soul. This could be happening to you at this, at this time as well. Ultimately, we follow our bliss. And sometimes by following our bliss, others get left in our dust. So certain things in your life may have affected you deeply, right? But it might not actually be anything because of you. Spirit guides want some of you to know that. Don't take anything personally, relinquish self-importance. 
Personal importance or taking things personally is a maximum expression of selfishness because we make the assumption that everything is about me. Now, this is part of being human, okay? It's tied to human ego, right? But I think we are recognizing a lot of people that the focus is on me and it's a little bit of self-centered energy. And we, as we evolve, as we grow, as we expand, we do recognize eventually through sometimes the school of very hard knocks that everything is interconnected, everything is intertwined. So the decisions that we make or the things that we do have a further impact than just us, right? Um, you know, everything from our effect on the planet, our effect on other people, our effect on, you know, situations, right? It's not just about us sometimes. So really what this is, this message on this card sounds a little bit harsh, right? But sometimes spirit needs to speak in very clear terms, right? Don't make assumptions that way. But this is really about seeing the big picture and recognizing the domino effect that things have. You might be part of the domino that has fallen over, but you might also be that first domino that has that trickle effect somewhere else in your world. So it's really just recognizing the big picture and our effect or other people's effect and that domino effect, right? Everything is linked. Everything is intertwined. None of us stand alone no matter what we do, no matter what we've got going on. Anyway, your guides have asked me to leave that there. Um, I hope that there was something in this reading that did resonate with you on some level. Not every message may have resonated and that's perfectly fine. You may have heard what you were meant to hear. Some of you may find yourself coming back to this reading. That's also perfectly fine. But I do hope there was something here for you. If you, if there was, or if you enjoyed your reading, please take a moment and press that like button there. Give me that thumbs up. It lets me know you resonate with the reading, which is so important to me. But it also lets the YouTube AI algorithm bots out there know that this is something that, hey, other people should see this and it helps spread the word. So I thank you so much for watching. Um, I really, truly hope you have a wonderful day. Subscribe to my channel, by the way, as well, if you haven't already. But I thank you. Blessings to you. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.